It's a beautiful morning on a summer day. I don't even know if that's the lyrics or if that's even appropriate because it's fall now. Y it can't be a beautiful morning if it's fall? No, I'm saying no. because it's summer. It's because the song says in, on a summer day oh, and it's fall. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That's why I was saying it wasn't appropriate. No, th okay. That's right. Yeah. Is it still technically fall? When's winter start? I Great. forgot. Great start to the show. Wait, but is it winter or fall? Wait, when is it? No, this is what people want to hear. I know this is what people want to hear. Winter and people starts might have in December, but because of global warming, we don't know anymore. Oh, and okay, we live in Los fair. Angeles. That, that's fair. We live in Los Angeles, so there, they, uh, seasons do not exist here. That's sir. right. Exciting day today. I will say that. Yes. Exciting day. We have two things that I like that oh, are okay. coming on the show. Car on Brar, return yes. guest. New movie out on Netflix, Who Be Halloween with Adam Sandler. Oh. Yeah. I'm not even sure if I said the first part right. Who Be? Hubie? I don't I think know. It's Hubie. But I have heard of it. Yes. Yes. Looks like a fun movie. Yeah. So check it out. Also, it's back. It's back? What, what's back? It's back. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's back. The Make We Sam Laugh Challenge. Oh, that's right. Yes. That's my producer. That's me. He knows I what's going on. did everything, and I still forgot. I <laughs> That's okay. There's a lot on your mind. There is. You're traveling soon, and I am it's, traveling it's a little soon. stressful for you, so it's okay. It's okay. Um, no, I'm super excited to talk to both of them. We're going to show the Make We Sam Laugh videos, and hopefully somebody wins a gift card today, and I laugh. Hopefully. 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 It made me a little nervous with that, because I feel like I'm going to get... It's going to be the Make We Sam Angry show it later. Uh oh, I'm you, just saying I, I've seen them all. Okay, I've seen all of them, and we have we've had had a bit of a break, so people might be a little, yeah, you know, they might have forgotten your sense of humor. That's all I'm saying. That's true. Well, if you're listening to this on Adobe Radio, thank you for tuning in live. Uh, we're also on YouTube, where you can watch the full episode tomorrow morning, Friday mornings, and we're also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thank you to all the new subscribers on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate you guys, and all of our new uh, followers on Instagram as well, at We Sam's World. We're also on Twitter, too, if you prefer Twitter. We're there as well. I, I feel very chill today. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm not, like, crazy emotional or crazy, like, non-emotional. Do you still get, like, the Thanksgiving, like, chill, like, relax like, yes. kind of thing? Oh, man. I was sleepy all day yesterday. Yeah, same. Dude, I took, like, a nap. I, then, then I still went to bed at an early time. I was just so sleepy yesterday. Yeah. Wow. Well, we had a good time during Thanksgiving with our, with our friend <laughs> we Jonte. We did, yeah. Well, fun fact about Jonte. If you want to see him get really emotional, just say, like, during a – like, we were playing board game. We are playing Jackbox TV. Yeah. And if you want to see him get – Worked up, just say, why are you crying? <laughs> oh, man. Why does it get him every single time? <laughs> Probably from childhood. There's something happened during childhood. Oh, man. I'm just saying. A lot that, a lot happened to Jonte during his childhood, that though. That is so true. It's, he had, oh, man. You could make a movie about Jonte's life. Like, do kind of like a boyhood movie. You know the movie Boyhood where it's like the, like every single, you could do that with Jonte's life. It would be the best comedy oh of the gosh. year. Oh my gosh, that is so true. I love that guy to death. So much fun. And then, yeah, we had a we had a big meal. Um, it was great. The games we played were very try to lie and get away with it. Yeah. Very malicious. Oh yeah, we were always just very mean. Hurtful words were thrown all around by your we wife. By my wife, yes, she knows. She is the most competitive person. Yeah. I know she will scream. She will shout at you. And that's the hard part because when she's lying, she does the same thing. She screams and shouts. So it's wow. just you don't know. You don't. She just screams and shouts either way. So I just have to go with the – I just have to – oh, she's possibly lying. Man. She might be lying. But <laughs> there's also something really funny. To say Jonte is lying when he's not lying. <laughs> also, another fun fact about Jonte, which I love, whenever he lies, he clucks like a chicken. That is true. To box, we sound like crazy people. We do. We do. 
Well, I hope everybody listening had a had a good Turkey Day. If you don't celebrate it, I totally understand why. And uh, happy uh, uh, Indigenous People Day as well, which is Friday on Friday. Mm-hmm. So, honestly, I think we should just call it that. Yeah. Yeah. Like we get rid of like Thanksgiving altogether, and we just make like the one. I don't want to say that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I like the fact. I think we should celebrate both. Can we do both? Yeah. But we shouldn't like lie to people and tell <laughs> them like fake stories with the Native <laughs> Americans and how like, yeah. you know. We were just happy. They them. had such a happy feast. Yeah. Everybody was mutually happy. Do you know you want to hear something really effed up? I what? believe Christopher Columbus did this. Oh, oh he, yeah, he did. <laughs> he blackmailed the uh, this group of Native Americans into giving his people extra supplies f- uh, to survive um, because he knew when the uh, moon eclipse was happening and he said, if you don't do that, I'm going to destroy you guys with this lunar eclipse. And they're like, what? And, of course, they don't know anything about it. And so they believed him and they perished. So a bad person. Bad, bad, literally a yeah, bad person. He chopped their heads off. Yeah. Bad person. So bad. Strong start to the show today. I know. Strong, strong, real start. We should get rid of Christopher Columbus Day. That's, I'm that's down something that. we should get rid of. He did not discover America. <laughs> that is the most white prejudice thing to say yeah. in the world. You know what? <laughs> I sprayed these with too much Lysol. Oh, do you smell it? It's killing me. Oh, okay. So we're going to have to switch these out Okay. before Karin gets here or else we can't do the show, baby. That's right. <laughs> Any, anything else going on with you? Uh, no. No. Uh, bruh, work. You know? Okay, he I had a stroke. <laughs> I can't talk about it on oh, air. Oh, 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 that's, that's fine. Right. It's fine. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's fine. That's okay. The, the, the person knows... Who they are. They don't watch the show, but if they do, Dude, you then s- they, they know. Are you okay? No. <laughs> You're actually concerning me. I'm pissed. I'll tell you about it once we stop doing the intro. Dude, <laughs> people are in the dark so bad right now, yeah. and so am I. And I can't tell them anything. Okay, are you in, are you in the cartel? All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, Mr. Karin Brar joins us again on the show. So stay tuned. I hope you're ready for the next five hours of your life. I'm so excited because I've got nothing else going on for the next five hours of my life besides this. You're one of the few people I could sit down with for five hours and talk about anything. Likewise, I, I think I anytime I have We Sam Quiche time, it's <laughs> that's what I call it. <laughs> Why does that sound a little dirty? <laughs> oh, oh, we should get there. <laughs> I mean, well, I we can take it there if you'd well, like to. Well, it's not that kind of podcast. Let's not take it there. Yeah, this isn't that talk yet. But we don't know what's going to happen in the next five hours. Who knows? Okay. This is where I want to start off with. You, <laughs> okay. I, you had blonde hair. Yes. And now it's blue. Yes. What is the cause of all this? A How mental do you feel? breakdown. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's the clip. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There's the promo clip. Um, and you can get a voice crack in there. It's so much fun. Uh, no, I just was, I was like, I'm, I'm not going to be working. Like there's... Mm. It, if I do book something, I can just like dye my hair back. But yeah. last December, I decided to dye my hair gray, and I was like, "This is so much fun! I really like this." And but it was only like the the tips of my hair; it wasn't like the full thing. And then I told my friend Chris, I was like, "Hey, I want to like fully bleach my hair and like do silver." And he was like, "I hate you, but I'll do this for you." Mm-hmm. And so we did that. And then I went to get a haircut, and he was like, "I have blue hair dye if you want it." And I was like, why not? There's nothing else I've got going on because yeah. every production's pretty much closed right now. Nothing's yeah. Nothing's really happening. They are picking it up again. There's some audition uh, like happening, but I've been hearing from like a lot of people like as, as soon as these productions get started up, within a few weeks, they shut back down because there's so many COVID cases that keep yeah. popping up. 
My, uh, my buddy Isaiah, he's bo he booked a recurring on NCIS, and they seem to have a pretty tight ship there. They've been going oh. with no problems and everything like that. And he's also booked a, uh, a couple commercials, uh, one for AT&T recently. So he's working on that right now. Oh, booked and uh, busy. Good yeah. Um, I think it's all over the place, but I, I think it's not stable. I definitely agree with you. It's definitely yeah. not stable with the way everything else is going. But uh, no mental breakdown, hopefully. You were joking about that, right? J j joking. Okay. Yes. No, Good. I'm... Thankfully, uh, quite mentally stable, thanks to my therapist. Um, Great. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> which, I'm, which I'm grateful for. My meds keeping me stable, which are fucking amazing. Same therapist you've had for a while? Or do uh, you switch, up, switch it up therapy? -wise? I recently had a breakup with my therapist. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, found, I had to go dating a little bit to find a new therapist. Okay. Um, found a new therapist. He seems pretty cool. Seems mm. pretty great. I'm really trying to do like, you know, uh, I'm focusing on the, the challenging work, not gossiping in therapy and not just being like, my life is hard, but being like, why do I do the things that I do? Uh, and like, why, if, if something upset me, why did it upset me? That's excellent. Thank you. You're questioning your own actions and actually taking a step back and looking at yourself from third person. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. It's try I'm just trying to be productive in therapy as much as possible. And so I realized I fell into the trap of like just complaining about my life. And then I would get frustrated and I'd be like, well, why am I not? A I don't feel accomplished. I just feel like I'm sitting around, like I said, complaining about my problems and waiting for something to change. Um, when the only thing you can control is yourself. So if you want things to change, then just ask yourself why you do things. That's great. Thank and the medication you're on, does that help? A deal with like the physical uh, feelings of certain emotions that pop up. Yeah, so I so I'm I'm diagnosed with um, major depressive disorder and PTSD, and so I like my depressive symptoms are a bit more physical. Like I can sleep for 14 hours if like and take naps throughout the day in like my worst depressive swings. Um, and my anxiety isn't as physical; it's more like internal, more uh, cerebral, and. I like just will spiral within my own head and what my meds do is pretty much just even the playing field. So I'm not like stuck to my bed for like 14, 15 hours, um, taking naps and I'm not like spiraling. Like I can really contextualize things and, um, you know, narrow down the, the scope of them instead of being super overwhelmed by them. Right. So, yeah, I can relate to you believe it or not, with the feeling of being tied to your bed. It's not with depression. It's with anxiety. Interesting. And I get really sleepy. Mm -hmm. And um, I understand that feeling with people whenever they just stay in bed all day and that anxiety feeling. I haven't had it in a while. It's um, good. I had a minor attack of it last year mm. for a couple months. During all those health, crazy health things that I was going through, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, my brain, my brain was going through – to the most unrealistic scenarios and like worst case scenarios and thinking, oh, that's what I have. By the way, I'm never going on WebMD ever again. Why? I'm not joking. This is not like no, a bit. I, uh, no, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you ever trust WebMD? I, it's, it's kind of just common knowledge. Like don't go on WebMD because anything will just be cancer. It'll always be you have cancer. It's either cancer or full blown AIDS, like either one of the two. It's not. It's nothing ever. Is that like, what it says? Full blown AIDS, yeah. not just like AIDS. And it's a guy going, "It's full blown AIDS," it's like is. that, and he's mumbling it a little bit. Yeah. Like, it's, you got full blown AIDS. Right? <laughs> it's full blown AIDS. Yeah. It's full. Blown AIDS. Full blown AIDS. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dude, this show is so ridiculous. What these, these conversations I have with people are awesome. Um, well, I'm glad you're in a better place because. Thank you. I think it's been pre-quarantine last time we were met up for coffee, if I recall, correct? Yeah, this is pre-quarantine. It, yep. was, it was a minute ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I miss our coffee sessions. I always really like our coffee sessions. I know. But we also, like we said earlier in this podcast, we spend hours at a time talking. Yeah, it's good. I think it's good to do that. Yeah. With people who are on the same mindset and, and who... Ah, that's a caveat. People are on the same mindset, and when I say mindset, it's like a mindset of continual, continual positive growth. Because mm. you, if you know, if you're a bunch of racists, you don't want to be. Yeah, that's valid. Don't hang out with the same mindset people. But you know? I was just talking to Sophie. Um, who, don't know her. Don't know her. Never heard of her. No, I'm uh, kidding. I know Sophie. Yeah. <laughs> 
I know. But I, we were, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going on We Sam's podcast. And we just were talking about the fact that you are such an easy person to talk to. Mm. Um, do you find that you do that with everyone in your life? Like you can just talk to anyone or it's like quite selective? Because from my point of view, you can, like you are great at leading a conversation. Now, for sure. Mm. I think part, part being doing the show for, I don't know how many episodes now, over a, way over 100 and from the previous podcast you kind of learn how to talk to a wide variety of different people on a talk show format talk show and I use that in quotation marks because this is weird this is not like I mean this is similar to our coffee yeah dates but like coffee yeah. dates okay I'll call them dates I'm not I'm comfortable with calling them a date <laughs> no, I'm kidding. see and that's also another thing I don't care anymore like I don't care there's there's barely a filter and I don't mind if there's a person I've never spoken to and the conver- it's a little awkward. Yeah. I'll call it out. Be like, oh, is that weird for you? Or <laughs> do you know what I mean? But in a genuine, like, non-aggressive way where they yeah. don't think I'm attacking them. So, yeah. See, now I would panic and I'd be like, how do I ask this person questions about their life to keep the conversation going? Oh, you gotta, you, see, I think some of the best questions are the most respectfully courteous ones. And I think I asked it to... John Ryan, who was a director who we were Skyping with, he's in New York, and I didn't know him. Mm-hmm. And I just go, what would be soul crushing to you if you didn't accomplish by the end of the, this lifetime? And he was like, whoa. And we kind of talked it through, and then we realized there was no excuse for him to do what he really wants to do right now. Was this for a director session, like a job, like this was contingent on a job? No, no. Oh. <laughs> he's just a guest on the show. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that, that, I was like, as, as your friend, I was just, I, immediately, I was like, we, Sam, <laughs> you should not be doing that. For those of you who don't know what director session are, it's like a next step after, like, a callback, um, yeah. and you pretty much meet with the director, and it's very important, and they see if, you know, you can take direction, and, but I can fully imagine you doing that, just, like, opening up the Skype call and just being like, hey, man, like, talk about your deepest, dark, <laughs> the deepest, darkest crevices in your yeah. life. What's your, what's your biggest fear? Uh, can we just run the scene? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that recent um, clip of, was it uh, yes, Lucas it. Gage? Was, was, is that his name? Uh, it's real, right? Yes, that's definitely real. Okay. My question is, why was he recording it? Uh, th- they do that now. They ask you to record um, while you're doing the Skype session, so they Copy. have a clear uh, tape to reference. I will say this. Kudos to Lucas for handling it so professionally. That was like the best professional choice you could do. Yeah. And he put him in his place in such a nice way. Yeah. Um, in the nicest way. I'm like, what would I would have done in that situation? And I don't think I would have handled it so well, sadly. I, I, I can agree with you in that I would probably be the same. Like I wouldn't have handled it as gracefully. I'd just awkwardly laugh and be like, ha you ready to do the scene? I'm in the dark, and I think some listeners might be too. Can you explain yes. what this is? Yes. No, so, it's okay. Figure it out yourself. Oh, okay. okay. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Google it. No. Um, so Lucas was an actor. He's doing a producer or a director session, um, and the director didn't mute his mic. And so he starts ragging on Lucas for living in this, quote-unquote, small apartment there's a TV in the background, and um, Lucas heard him. He's like, hey, man, if you just give me the job, then I can afford a better uh, apartment. And the director was like, oh, my God, I am mortified. I am so sorry. He's like, no, no worries, man. I, if, if I get this job, then I won't have to sh- stay in the shitty apartment. By the way, his apartment wasn't that shitty at all. It's not that bad. It was, it was a perfectly decent apartment. Like, I, you, know how I know, you know how I know it was good? How? The walls were blue. Uh, it was painted and yeah. there was there was um in my mind maybe i'm making this up for, from my memory but there was what's that border call at the, uh at the, crowning is it molding crowning crown molding crown molding there we go this, what is this construction with karen <laughs> <laughs> that's a new youtube show thanks that should that should be a youtube show no that's the story and oh, so okay. he was mortified that this uh young actor heard him ragging on his shitty apartment i wonder if he got the job Probably not based on the fact that he posted it. Yeah. But I would be pretty pissed off. 
I've yeah. had some like pretty bad sessions that I wish were recorded just so I could like post them like that. Mm. Where I'm like, wow, you're just a, a mean person. Anything, anything in particular pop up? Oh yes, there's like one that I remember. I, I went in and the character was supposed to be like very neurotic, and it was a comedy. And I was like, oh okay, like it's cool to be bigger with this. And a stereotype uh, about Disney Channel actors or ex Disney Channel actors is that like we can't act and that we only know how to do one specific thing, which to a certain extent is kind of true. Like it's hard to break that if you've been doing one style of acting for so long, which is this like big over the top thing it's hard to meet baseline again. It takes a few auditions where you're like, okay. But anyways, I go in and I do it pretty like big. And then he, he's, he's like, whoa, whoa, stop. That's, uh, that's so big. Um, no, can you just do it? And I was like, yeah, of course. Like I'll, I'll do it differently. Um, and I do it differently. And he looks down at this, at the script and he goes, wow, you can actually take a note. And then I was like, Jesus, I was like, you know what? This guy has seen like a thousand people today. He's probably had a really rough day. Like I'll, I'll let it be. He calls me back and I'm like, great, cool. Like I, this, he'll probably be nicer to me because you know, he's like, oh, I was just having a bad day. Anyways, get through the script and I accidentally screw up one of the jokes. I, I like, you know, uh, flipped one of the words and he goes, stop, stop. He's like, you, you, you messed up the joke. And I was like, oh, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, uh, let me do it. Mind you, this was like a one page scene. <laughs> like, and I was like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, I'll, I'll do it over again. And it was one of those, th one of those situations where as much as I would have liked having the job, I was just like, Jesus, I will do anything to avoid being like called back in front of that um, casting person again, because they're going out of their way to make me and most likely other actors just feel bad when they've driven 45 minutes to like go to this audition, sit there for an hour. Wow. That's, um, that's so not only unprofessional, I don't know. Uh, what's the point? Like what he thinks is going to happen. Is he going to get the best possible result, you know, f f through doing something like that? It's just so small. Like it's, it's such a small person thing to do mm -hmm. to go, oh, I'm just going to rag on these actors and make them feel like crap when they're already most likely nervous yeah. and anxiety-ridden right? and want to book this job and make them feel much worse. So I, I got a story for you then. Ooh. And this is something, if people did some research, they could probably figure out who the actor was. Mm. And I, everything I'm going to say on the show is something I would say to their face if they were here. Lovely. So that's a rule I have. I can't say anything I wouldn't say to somebody's face. I love it. Alive on the air. So, uh, Domain Davis directed an episode of For the People, mm. in which I had some really great scenes in mm. for that episode. And we had a guest actor that was um, the weirdest situation I've ever been in to start off the day. Ooh. So, first off, I get, I'm get i walking to my trailer, and I'm not even in costume yet, and I see Domain and uh, one of the PAs. And Domain's like, Hi. I'm like, hey, what's up? And she goes, because I've, I've met her before, and yeah. I could tell something was up. She goes, so the guest actor that's on the show is asking if you can rehearse with him before the scene. And for people who are not actors, that is not protocol. No. At all. Like, rehearse, we'll do that in the blocking, and that's whenever the director and everybody's there. Like, what do you want me to do with you special before that moment? And there's a big difference between rehearsing a scene and getting to know another actor and going, hey, let's just run lines if, if you're comfortable with it. Like, if you need to, I, I think there's a, a stark difference between that and rehearsing. And if someone's asking to rehearse, that's, God, that's so weird. Well, I think there's, those are three different things, too. So getting to know somebody beforehand, yeah, I'm going to come meet you before we actually yeah. and, and talk, and that's fine. I don't mind that. Rehearsing, now let's save that with the director and everything because I – we're not, you're not a series regular on the show, and, and that doesn't mean, like, I'm not saying, like, oh, you're not as good as me. Or no, the, you're, the, like, we haven't been working together, and there's probably something specific that the director of this wants, or the producers. As a series regular with another series regular, you guys kind of know the flow of the show already, yeah. and be like, hey, can we just run, just rehearse this? I want to hear the pacing, and because we yeah. kind of have an idea. With this, 
we wait till when the blocking because that's what you're being paid for if i'm yeah. not mistaken and running lines oh i'm not running lines with you that's something on that's that's interesting th that's on you after rehearsal does that make sense for instance if it's like page and a half mm -hmm. are we running lines because you don't have your lines I know for me, if, if, if I go in and sometimes yeah. like I don't know the flow of a scene or the lines just aren't sticking as well, there's, there's scenes where like I can rehearse it for three hours the night before and the lines just aren't sticking. And it would be very helpful for me to understand like, oh, this is what the flow of the scene is going to be like. Oh, interesting. Okay. But anyway, different I'll perspective. Let you, I'll let you finish your story. No, 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 no. That's actually a great perspective. I, you know what? That's a great that's I can agree with that, and maybe I should be a little bit more flexible. That's fine. I'm also the better actor out of this, out of us too. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was the funniest thing you've ever said. I know. And oh, <laughs> <laughs> woo! Car on Brar. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you. I'm kidding. No, uh, please. You are the better actor, Karin. Yes, with my Disney Channel experience. No, you are. You are. Um, anyway, so I tell the I tell Domain. Domain was like, if you if you want, you, I was like, yeah, sure. Let me get in the costume and or wardrobe and and, uh, and I'll start running lines. So I did, and this guy was very friendly, very jokey, mm. and didn't seem like he had a good gr grip on the lines, and that annoyed me. Ooh. And he started saying, uh, yeah, I've got like a family and stuff like that. And so I was staying up late and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, okay. All right, whatever, man. Like, I get it. You probably have a bunch of kids. You're staying up late trying to memorize lines or whatever. And you have kids waking up, whatever. Uh, that's fine. Um, proceeds throughout the whole episode to continuously make jokes. And like uh, joking with the makeup and hair and I was just like, man, this guy's not focused. I could tell he's not focused. Yeah. And then when we got into the scene, oh, man, calling line, not making sure the lines are exactly right and doing this and doing this and messing up. And it progressively made our day longer and longer and longer. And as the day went on, I progressively got more annoyed, more annoyed, more annoyed. Finally, in the most professional way possible, I went up to Domain. I'm like, hey, how do you handle somebody like this because I'm really amazed at how well you're speaking to him because I don't know if I could do that I think I would just scream be like yeah oh you're fired what are you doing aren't we paying you <laughs> which is valid it's like you have one job which is show up on set know your lines and say your lines because everything is contingent on you as an actor it's like everyone else is is putting so much effort into this one moment for you to just say your lines yes. the least you can do is just memorize them not only that, it's a competitive field. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and people's livelihoods, because we want to make sure that, this, that the scene is good, so that the episode is good, so that the show is good, so that we continue doing this, and people's livelihoods can continue to be affected in a positive way. Like, that's what we're doing. And people can make a living off the show, not just you. So she told me, you know what? I feel you, and I feel that frustration. But there's no, like, it would not benefit the shoot for me to rail into him and then say, all right, act. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, yes. She's looking at the bigger picture. So that's something I really respected from her and how a director can really contain their fr frustrated emotions yeah. to, to actors sometimes who are unprepared. Yeah, I've been in those situations as well. And I've been in like your shoes more times than not where I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to lose my shit. Oh, sorry. I thought I was oh, like, no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, is he just done with the episode? For those of you that are listening, we Sam just like moved his mic away and then like got up um, to grab his drink, uh, and now he's proceeding to mime walking out the door because um, he thinks he's funny um, by committing to this joke. It's a bit. God, I missed you. <laughs> God, I missed you, man. You missed the shit. I, I love our you. awkward. Silence <laughs> moments. That's radio, baby. That's, that's podcasting. That's podcast. <laughs> that's what makes radio is the silence. Are you staying fit? 
Uh, I'm trying to. Probably not as, yeah. as well as I'd like to be. I don't think I've, like... I'm slowly getting... I'm doing this thing where I'm do, building micro habits. So, like, I... What? Yeah, micro habits. I've never heard of this. So, it's like, instead of... I have this really bad problem where I'm like, Monday, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to, like, make my bed. I'm going to go on a routine. I'm going to, like, eat these healthy things. And I'm going to work out. And I, like, overload myself to, like, mm. make an instant life transition into something that's way better for me. Um, and so instead I took a step back and I was like, well, let me just start with like, for one week, I will just make my bed as soon as I get up in the morning and oh. let that stick. And then it's like, okay, well then maybe I'll also meditate in the mornings and let that stick. And then it's, it's just like building on to, you know, already existing habits. So you're not overwhelmed by it. And that's great. Yeah. It's wonderful. But the working out piece is definitely has been challenging for me. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I understand that. But the little little victories you do in the mo in the beginning of the day help. Making your bed is one of the best things you can do. Yeah. It's a great start. It's easy enough, you know. But I'm waiting to, like, I, I want to, like, when it comes to, like, my bed, meditating, doing all that stuff, I'm like, oh, this feels good. It's for my mental health. It, my space is clean and whatnot. But for some reason with working out, all of the excuses line up really, really high. And they're like, I want to change my perspective on it and be like, yeah, working out. Here we go. But really, my internal dialogue is, fuck this. I don't want to do this. Mm. Then what's the? It's you got to think of what's the purpose. Because to look hot in a movie when I have to take my shirt off. Are you being serious? I'm kidding. Oh. But kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you really want to look that good it takes a lot of work. it takes a and that's the thing but here's the thing you can trick yourself you should be two weeks away from getting ripped two weeks away so if you can maintain and it's definitely maintainable maintain a body type that you can be like oh if i were to shoot a shirtless scene in two weeks i'll be fine hmm that's like, a good I, way to look at it do you know what i mean did you did your phone just go off hold on that's my fans what do they say? Just compliments. Clearly. You know, for a guy who's done hundreds of uh, podcast episodes, mm -hmm. it's amazing that you don't have your phone on silent. I, don't, I never have it on silent. You know why? Joe Rogan would never. Do you know why? Why, we say I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> See, I keep my phone on silent. But I have the bad habit of checking my phone so often. So I'm like, I pride myself on not missing any phone calls or texts from like people I work with. But you're busy. I remember when we'd get our coffee dates, your agent would call like at least twice during one of our calls. And I'd be like, oh, take it. You're like, no, no, it's fine. I'm like, all right. And then one time you took it. Hello? Uh, can we cut from when I go, who's that? And then to here? Is that possible? Is that okay with you? Okay, we jumped. It's already magical. We jumped. We, we're there. We're there. We just jumped because there was a nice gentleman who came in who wanted to wash the windows, but I'm not in charge of the space, yeah. and neither are you. So. Unprofessional, but moving and, on. Dude, dude, I miss this. Me ragging on you for like two hours straight? Yes. Oh. I miss, I miss talking with the people I want to talk to. Oh. Yeah. That actually, that's so sweet of you to say. I know. I really appreciate that. I know. I was really looking forward to today. Same. I wanted to know what emotional journey you were on because obviously you were working a lot through your therapist, right? Yeah. And then also you were very politically active these last six months as well. I should say six months, -ish, yeah. right? And... You did something with Sarah, which I enjoyed so much. Sarah Gilman? Yeah, Sarah Gilman. Yeah. yeah. Can we talk about, like, what, pr where, where the, the little spark of huge political involvement started to, started to go into for you? Yeah, I think where it really started for me was the Cameron Boys Foundation. We were already kind of, like, doing, st we were already talking about what our voice was going to sound like um, in the like political sphere as so much is happening right now and just being intertwined with that it it just kind of felt 
normal to to also lend my voice to causes that I believe in. Mm. With everything going on, it's just like, you know, this this election is going to be, you know, a big part of history books. <laughs> you know, the, everything that has happened in the past four years is going to be a big part of, of history. And what side of history are you going to be on? What side of history did you lend your voice to? Um, and for me, I was like, I... I'm too scared of what a future would look like if Donald Trump won. And I want to make sure that if I feel this level of fear and I'm on this pedestal of privilege, imagine how other people, more marginalized people feel. And it's not okay for me to just sit there and be like, well, it's okay. If I'll be fine, then like mm. everyone else can fend for themselves. It's like, no. I respect that. Thank you. Because it's one thing to post about things and not do anything actively. And so that I commend you for at feeling that. Dude, since your awareness level has jumped up a lot and I'm so glad to see you growing into a very, a very strong young man. I remember first time I met you, it was not like, like this. Fuck this kid. Uh, I was like, mm, I feel so bad for him. <laughs> you know, it's funny, my mom says the same thing. About you? Yeah. I'm what? kidding. Oh, I was I'm like, kidding. I must have cut this part out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. My mother is lovely. No, I'm just, I'm so glad to see your growth as a person. And it's really interesting um, seeing it from my perspective. But I, I hope your awareness continues to grow as well. Because I think that's when you're going to start seeing really big changes in yourself. Self-awareness is key. And um, yeah, man. I, I hope mine uh, continues to grow, like like you said. It's I I think at times in my life it's been self awareness in like the wrong areas of my life where I I'm just like obsessing over the wrong things. Yeah. Uh, because I'm just like anxiety ridden, and now I'm able to like put perspective on things and right. understand like what needs my focus and what doesn't. Yeah. Um, and what I can accept to just be a part of the human experience right. and what I should chop up more to just. <laughs> me tripping and falling and I should get back up. Yep. Yeah. Well, um, I wish more people were like that. I really do. Yeah. I wish more people were like me too. It's really interesting. Did you ever get to meet with some people from the other side of the aisle that you were against and kind of talk with them by chance? Yes, but I, I am not, productive in those conversations and I'm trying to work on that. Ah, what do you mean? Because I get so frustrated with the other side. Ah, uh, you react, you react emotionally. Like, yeah, I just don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand, um, how people can sit by while so, so much is happening right now. Yeah. And just be like, well, either the most I hear from the other side is, well, the economy, which I'd never understand that argument about what, Donald J. Trump has done for the economy. Um, not that I'm an economist and I have, not that I have the most to speak about on that subject, but, you know, I think LGBTQ rights kind of goes above the economy for me <laughs> in my head mm. um, or people's, you know, rights and basic safeties. Um, but yeah, I get like way too heated in those conversations because I just don't understand how they can be so ignorant, so narrow minded, and so focused on their own privileges and refuse to like widen their scope to understand how other people might be hurting. Yeah. I mean, a few things pop in my head when you say those kind of things, just because I've talked to people on the other side of the aisle. How is that for you? It's very interesting case studies on perspective. I mean, I've talked about perspective on this freaking podcast probably like 20 episodes in a row, but it's, it is, it, 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 it's what all your life choices are based, are you based off of? Yeah. And the less perspective you have, the more stupid choices you make, I've learned. Um, for instance, I'm just using this as an example because there's actually some things in the Bible I, I agree with tremendously and I have a lot of great Christian friends and, and that sort of thing. But if you are talking to someone who goes, the Bible in its entirety is the word of God. If that's what they believe, Dude, that is, that is a barrier that is almost impossible to break. Why? Uh, let's say you try to say to them, well, um, 
you know it was actually put together by a group of people and it's been translated multiple times. Um, they'll be like, no, in the Bible it says that the devil is trying to put so doubt in your mind. So that's why I, yeah. I'm not going to believe you. So it's like, okay, so this person is, is working from a space that is basically unmovable unless some drastic life event were to happen to them. Yeah. Um, sometimes they get to talking with somebody and it's almost like what, again, John Ryan said, the director we were talking to, you almost have to Trojan horse the conversation mm. and just kind of sow seeds and let it grow organically in their mind, you know, have them like, no, homosexuality is a sin. Anybody who does it is like they're a bad person, they're a heathen, whatever. And then it's the kind of, you know, like you'd have to put it in a situation where you have them talk to somebody that they don't know is gay Yeah. for like weeks at a time. And they're really nice and everything. And then they find out later that they're gay and they're like totally shocked by it. Yeah. And then maybe in their mind they go, well, he's not as bad as everybody at church says people like that are. Yeah. Maybe there is. That's the only way. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. So. Now, do you feel like a lot of Trump supporters are, are kind of like those, uh, how you described the like Christians that are like every word is the word of God. Like, do you think a lot of Trump supporters are that way or? I think what we see on the media, the, you yeah. know, those extreme Trump supporters, the guys in the trunks, yeah. and every, trucks and everything and the flags. And everything, I think that's a very small minority of people. Yeah, it's smaller than it's. I think it's way smaller than you think. I actually and, dis disagree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think what was scary for me is I was visiting my parents up in the suburbs of Los Angeles and there was like a Trump train going on. Yeah. And it was terrifying how many cars full of people I saw with Trump flags just like hooting and hollering <laughs> about their support mm. and love for Trump. And that was terrifying to me. And I was like, the president of the United States struggled to denounce white supremacists on national television. Mm -hmm. And you can stand there with the utmost pride and not just sit there at least be like, hey, I support him, but like, I can understand where you're coming from, but so mm -hmm. blatantly going, I'm gonna stand on my high horse with so much pride that I'm going to go to a Trump rally and just drive around a suburb of like LA and to a certain extent terrorize people. Like that was quite terrifying for me. I was like, I'm going to get a hate crime. <laughs> like I need to get the fuck out of here. I, I, I could totally understand that, that feeling and seeing all those cars and feeling like, Whoa, there's a lot of these people. I don't think it's more than, and, and it might seem like a big number, but in comparison to the whole United States, yeah, that's what I'm focused on. Yeah, twenty percent. I'm talking about and at twenty percent max. Yeah, because, and I feel like the other twenty percent that voted for like, or excuse me, the other percentage that voted for him, which was like what forty-seven percent of the people who voted voted for Trump. I think they just don't like Democrats. And yeah, they're like and they're like shit. We gotta vote for him. We gotta vote for Trump again. Yeah, I don't think they they were in love with him to be honest with you. Yeah. I think it's hard to be in love with him. I mean, look at Melania. She's clearly struggling through that. She's ready to go. <laughs> yeah. She's ready to go. I, I really, I really, <laughs> she really is. I, I really miss the days of two people from different sides of the aisle debating. Yeah. Having an intelligent debate with one another. Because there are some things I lean more conservative. There's some things I lean more yeah. liberal. Um, I'm not going to talk about all those things on air, but... There is no, I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's no reason for Americans to hate one another. Yeah. For I the majority of Americans to hate one another, that is the most insane thing. And I think we've been played. I, I think we've been played by the dawn. <laughs> um, I, I agree. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not productive. It, it doesn't lead to productive conversations mm. um, or good results. And it's important for us to have open dialogue about each other's ideas mm. and accepting spaces. But right now it's just like, I understand why like the liberal side can't even begin to have a conversation with, with the right, because it's, it just, it's coming down to like basic human rights sometimes. And it's like, why are we fighting over this? This is someone's, yeah, sorry. Uh, absolutely. No, no, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just want to be specific. When you say liberal side, yeah. Who, are you, who are you talking to? Are you talking to the far-right extremist or the far... 
because I'm from Oklahoma. Yeah. I know a lot of conservatives. Yeah. And I, I, and I know some people who are Trump supporters. Yeah. But they don't like what he says about white supremacy yeah. and they don't like what he says about like he's, he's not supportive of the LGBTQ community, but they still vote for him. Yeah. Which is that's mine, which yeah. is mind boggling to me. And it's, you know, yeah. but it's like, okay, but you're like, you vote for him. But so you don't hate those people. You work with them and you, and you love them too. So like, what, how does that, that's an interesting dichotomy that these people have. So when you say liberal, who are you talking about? Um, I guess left-leaning people who identify as, as liberal. Is, it, mm. <laughs> is that what you mean? No, no, I'm so sorry. I'm not clear enough. Um, are you talking about like far oh, ex- left extremists like Antifa or like um, or or is it I like guess I'm, I, honestly I this is how I feel amongst like the range of leftist people that I've met is that they all have that general consensus of like right now we're just debating like you know people's basic rights like mm. the basic rights of LGBTQ people and youth and we're we're debating that like that shouldn't be a debate um and that's where i think the general left side all of it feels like okay there's no point of having a conversation um Mm. which i don't think is is right either like i don't think it's right either yeah like we're not gonna get anywhere with that but i i just i understand i understand the frustration where i'm like yeah, I don't want to talk to someone who's like our our main conversation point is, hey, do you believe in basic human rights? <laughs> you know, it's I was watching the Jimmy Carter, um, so a, a nice little video on Jimmy Carter, which I didn't know much about him, and the kind of uh, convoluted, most complicated situation he was in whenever he was in office for four years, and how he truly cared for peace and American people and he got kind of screwed towards the end of his presidency mm-hmm. because of uh, some crazy, crazy political stuff. So, and the, I'll, t- I'll say why I'm bringing this up for those of you wondering. And, and the, 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 the topic and the thing I want to focus on is keeping the conversation open with people you disagree with. Mm-hmm. Why that's so important. Even when basic human rights are being debated. Because, in my opinion, the only alternative is like, what, you're going to kill each other and see who lives? Yeah. Afterwards, that's healthy. Yeah. That's, that can't be an option. I don't want civil war. Yeah. So, Jimmy Carter is negotiating a peace deal between Egypt and Israel. And that place is a mess during that time. They were supposed to only do it for like two or three days. It ended up lasting 11 days. And he kept riding his bicycle between one of the buildings and the other building, the one that the Egyptians were in and the one that the Israelis were in, and just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And at times, a lot of times, he was like, they were like, uh, you need to stop because they're not going yeah. to solve anything. Finally, it was the last day, and he's talking to, oh, please let me get this right, the Israeli prime minister, and he's like, hey, I, I, I really hope we could work something out. This is what the Israeli prime minister is saying to um, Carter. He's like, but it's not going to work. There's going to be no peace. So Carter pulls out these photos of him and the Egyptian leader and Carter kind of holding hands, shaking hands when they first met at the, the camp. And he's like, man, I really wish I could have told your grandchildren that, you know, that, that you could have told your grandchildren, hey, this is where we made peace within the Middle East, but um, you won't be able to do that. And the guy broke into tears. Mm-hmm. And then finally he was like, we'll sign the peace, peace accord. Now, they signed it. And it's been the longest lasting peace accord between Israel and Egypt. And they didn't agree on everything, but they agreed on a lot of points and progress was made. Yeah. And so as hard as it is sometimes to see things from another person's perspective and for people listening to this as well, 
I think it's so crucial, man. You can't give up. You can't, yeah. you can't give up in trying to live peacefully and trying to show people, uh, you know, that, hey, what I believe for is, fi- is, is for basic human rights is not like an issue here. Uh, excuse me. It shouldn't be an issue here. Yeah. Watch. Somebody's going to get that uh, sound bite and then I get canceled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't want people to give up, man, because civil war, killing one another, I see what's that, that's happened in my country and other countries in the Middle East and other countries all around the world, and the damage is irreversible. Yeah. It's scary. It's really scary to think about uh, an America that isn't productive and isn't, you know, moving, leading uh, a brighter future for the rest of the world. Um not that it's always been that, but I'm just saying that, like, I think that a lot of people look to America as the American dream, as a pinnacle of, of hope and prosperity. And it's sad that we are looking at America where we're like, some of us are actually terrified of a civil war happening. Some of us are really terrified of our democracy being, you know, crippled uh, permanently. And I don't know. I, I, I think that's that's terrifying. <sighs> This might be a controversial point. You ready for this? Ooh. Can you imagine how beloved? I'm being serious right now. If, okay. if um, now this, there would be a lot of caveats. I mean, he wouldn't have to be, uh, <laughs> Trump would have to be a totally different person. But I'm just t- talking about when he first started campaigning. Yeah. If immediately he denounced, denounced like white supremacist, you know, white supremacist. And he was like, oh, dude, those, those fucking idiots. I can't believe they did that. Like, he talked the way he would talk. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then um, maybe the inappropriate things he said, like, in that, what is that, in that, uh, uh, in that, in that bus with that yeah. one guy. And he goes, yeah, that was really stupid of me. I shouldn't have said that. that that's uh, totally unacceptable. I, I, you know what? I really have, shouldn't have said all that. And then. And then just started because of his like demeanor and how so many people say they like, oh, I like the way he just says what he says. And if he yeah. actually did stuff to make improvements and made equality and all this yeah. stuff, you know how much how many people would actually like him? Yeah, I think Isn't that nuts to think about? Like I if if, think it, if weirdly his demeanor could get accepted if he would take accountability for his actions. But even just like the president of the United States lies, blatantly lies. I know, I know. I'm, I'm just saying, like, uh, the, yeah. in the upside down world, he would be yeah. the most beloved person in the world. If you really thought about it, if he really just changed all his negative actions to positive. I don't think, I don't think he would be, there's something that just so sleazy about him that I don't think he'll ever get there. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about his actions too. This is a what if, by the way, for all the people commenting on now, like he could <laughs> never be this. I know it. it's just a what if. I'm just saying, put him in the upside down world, the total opposite of who Donald Trump is today. He would probably be like that cool guy you might want to hang out with. That's hard to that's so hard to say. It's controversial. I don't care. But he's not. So win win. <laughs> don't know what to tell you, people. Comment. I don't give a shit. <laughs> How old are you now? Timeless. Soul is timeless, my friend. Thirty three. 33. Okay, so you've you've passed the cuz there's always that saying like in your when you hit 30 you just stop giving a shit. When did you think you hit that at 30 exactly? Cuz I I or just I like know. recently it's been a thing. I don't know when, to be honest with you. I don't care. I don't know. I honestly don't care when it happened. I just like thinking about things and just talking yeah. things out on the show cuz that also helps too. And people have to realize that whenever you talk things out, and if you're not used to talking things out, you're going to mess up, and you're going to say stupid shit, and the only way for you to realize it's stupid is for you to say it out loud, and somebody to go, ah, or, mm, ah, you can't be on Twitter all day and not get that facial recognition back. So, I like talking things out loud. I like it, 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 developing thoughts, and sometimes they go, oh, that was really not a good thought to have, or, oh, you know what, that actually reinforces a view that I have, because I talked it out with somebody, and they gave me another perspective, i.e., the whole running lines bit that we talked about earlier. Yeah. That's a really great point because I came from the perspective of, oh, this is a professional job. I'm, I came ready. I'm 100% ready. And in my mind, I thought anybody who doesn't come ready, yeah. they haven't practiced and they don't care. So that was just my perspective. But yeah. there's and, truth And I also, I'm, I'm really sensitive to that, like to go back to that subject because like 
one thing one thing I really struggle with with my depression is memory loss. Oh really? Yeah. So like I like a lot of my memories are either after a certain period it just gets like very certain periods of my life are very fuzzy and like lately it's been like for me to memorize like a page and a half recently was incredibly stressful like and it's it's I have to do stuff to like make sure I work on my memory but I come from that perspective where I'm like I have something that actively affects my memory and I have to like work on like rebuilding it it's not as bad like I have like full-on blackouts or something where I'm like I don't remember anything or I can't like I have short-term or long-term memory loss it's just like my memory is very fuzzy really yeah is it a side effect of the medication you think possibly no it's it's my depression itself so the depression makes you forget things like short-term memory things yeah I can I can either literally uh, there's there's moments where um, I I've in my worst periods where I I remember I was at uh, a bar with friends and they were like hey do you want a drink and I was like yeah sure and I turn around they they got me a drink and they're like there you go and I was like what do you mean and they were like we we you asked for a drink and I was like no I, I didn't and that was in like my worst period where like I I was like forgetting certain things whoa yeah yeah and and there's certain things where like I'm like did that happen before or after certain events like I I can't place them on a perfect timeline whoa yeah do you think it's your body trying to go into some type of survival mode it's a trauma response gotcha yeah. that makes sense yeah so it's not like a permanent thing. You just have no, to continue no. building it up again. Yeah, I think like now that I'm in a place where I'm like seeing a therapist that I that I, I'm getting along with, that I've taken time out of my life to like really get my meds and stuff like in order. I think I'm like going to be because before memory wasn't that like I was like I was memorizing memorizing fifty page scripts like weekly, and I was like I was fine. And yeah, I knew them like the back of my hand. Um, it's just like now in the past like two years of my life where it's just gotten really bad and I'm like, okay, this kind of sucks. I mm. just need to iron things out and like maybe just do stuff to do mental exercises, like do a puzzle or something, just to like work on it. That's great. Memorizing a sonnet a week. I got that from Anthony Hopkins. A that, sonnet. Yeah, wow. because it's more difficult. You really have to understand what you're saying. Yeah. So that causes the brain to really work double time. And so, yeah, yeah. sonnet's probably only like this big, right? Yeah. But you really have to understand what you're saying to such a yeah. core. And I think that will help you too. Ooh, a sonnet week. Okay. Get some Shakespeare in you. I mean, hey, God knows a brown boy does Shakespeare by now. <laughs> <laughs> what have you seen brown Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when you've seen Brown Shakespeare. I'm kidding. There's probably plenty of great Brown Shakespeare out there. Othello. <laughs> you know what Othello is? Nope. Okay. For those of you who know Othello, you'll get the joke. The main guy's black. Oh, lovely. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. That's great. <laughs> I just don't associate Shakespeare with diversity. Oh. Yo oh, dude. <laughs> dude. This guy. You know, Shakespeare is so beautiful in the fact that if done correctly, you can do wonderful, diverse projects with it. If done correctly. <laughs> if done correctly. If done correctly. Yeah. A lot of shit Shakespeare. Yeah? Oh, my God. Yeah. I think there's a lot of shit Shakespeare. I'm listening to, uh, to This American Life, and they're replaying an episode about um, how they were doing Shakespeare in a prison. And it just was, and this guy who's like, is, who's recording all of this and is like the, the reporter, he's just seen some of the best Shakespeare in, in the world. And it's just so amusing for him to like sit there and watch these like hardened criminals, like, yeah, do, do sonnets of Shakespeare. <gasps> That's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Is this on YouTube? Uh, no, it's, it's a podcast. Oh, dude, that'd actually be great to watch. Oh, I would do That'd be something I'd love to do. Teach uh, Shakespeare in prison. To harden criminals and tell them about the stories because those stories are so hardcore. I, I don't know anything uh, about Shakespeare, but I take your word on it. Dang it. I know. I'm an uncultured swine when it comes to like anything in our industry. You know why I like Shakespeare? Why? It was the first term, first term, first time I heard my acting teacher say, with Shakespeare, you have to act on the word. 
what does that mean? You have to be so present into what you're saying. And if you know all the lines, you 90% of the acting is already done for you. Yeah. You just have to say them and kind of go along with this roller coaster ride. Don't fight it, just go along with it. And when you understand it and you're able to execute it, you're like, whoa, this is insane. This is the craziest thing you can do as an actor. I really truly believe that is if you can do Shakespeare well, because you're literally, oh, dude, that's so bonkers to think about. You're literally getting in a roller coaster that you've built yourself and just go, okay, here we go. And I'm not going to like try to slow it down myself or anything like that. I'll just let it go the way I'm speaking the words and really think about what words I'm saying as I'm saying them. Interesting. And that's some, great advice, by the way, from, from your teacher. She's great. Her name is Lisa Wilson. Love you. And uh, she was the best acting teacher I've ever had. She was okay. so hardcore. Not as, she wasn't this extreme, but she, there was parts of it that were like it. Um, have you seen Whiplash? Yeah. Yeah, like that teacher. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it was great. She threw chairs at your head? No. One time she saw a bad performance of somebody doing something in class, and she said, it's, I almost have the words right, watching you is like having my veins pulled out of my wrist. And I was like, ah. I would cry. Dude, dude. I was like, yeah. Because that, <laughs> because because like, it that was person hard. never came prepared. That's valid. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would. Acting teachers going off is probably one of my favorite pastimes to watch. It's like, <laughs> it's my favorite thing. Because they just say the most insane shit. If you want good. You know what? Here's a great Friday night uh, date activity. Um, Come audit. over to my house. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say audit an acting class. Oh, okay. And just see that beautiful, chaotic shit show. And you will, you'll be so amazed. Like, the characters, the, the actors who show up there, you're like, who are you? Where did you come from? Why are you doing this? And this teacher, how did they get here? Why are they doing this? And why are they so angry? And it's the, it's the best. My... Uh, another good acting class, Stacey Edwards with Keep It Real Acting. She does Meisner Technique mm. and Advanced Seed and Study. Oh my gosh, amazing. Uh, one of the classes I was taking from her, one of the kids got so frustrated, he kicked a hole in the wall. And you know what? I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, did he do a good job? No, 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 uh. no. No. He was frustrated. Damn. Yeah, that's the worst. That's the worst feeling about acting is when a scene just doesn't click, no matter how much work. You Have you ever been there where you're like, it always works. It always works for you, <laughs> dude. Whoever's watching this for the first time, I'm not an asshole. I just like no, joking you around. Are. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm a little bit of an asshole. No, no of I, course that's happened. Are you kidding? I yeah. I fuck up a lot whenever I'm rehearsing with myself. I. It's same, yeah. I, I, I just like, I just get frustrated when you like put in so much effort. And there's days where you roll up to set, where just a scene isn't clicking. It just, it isn't working. And you just have to take it instead of it being like magic and butter and just flowing, as like. Oh, good. on set. On set, or just you know rehearsing in class. For sure, for sure. I will say this. I've been doing this Sunday acting class still with my buddy Isaiah. Yeah. And that class has really, really elevated. We've been doing it now for almost five years. Wow. And four and a half. Yeah, something like that. And I'm telling you, man, back to basics. Whenever we know a scene isn't working, whenever we're self-taping or rehearsing, yeah. we go back to basics. What do you want? Are the stakes high enough? Am I really listening to you? Am I just prepping what I'm going to say? Yeah. Am I really present in the moment or I'm just planning everything I'm going to do and not living organically? Yeah. You know what? I need to make a stronger choice here. We go back to those basics every single time and the scene just works. I think it's constant practice that really will set you above the bar. Yeah. I know we talked about it before, but I still would love, 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 love to have like an, like an hour or two just acting cold read scene with you where we just run it over and over and over we've and over kind again. Of, uh, we've, we've rehearsed a, 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 like 
a scene before. I remember you had an audition. You were like, "Hey, can you come over and read this with me?" Yeah, but like a legit, like no cameras, no no self no self date. We just rehearse and run it over and over and over and over again, which sounds. It doesn't sound this, boring to me, it's, but it's, it sounds like intense. It sounds intimidating, is what it sounds like. Which is like, I'm down with it. It's just intimidating. <laughs> I think it's great. It's the only way to to really live, to, to start feeling that organic yeah. life that you want in a scene. Were you going to say something? Sorry. No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh. I thought we could take a break. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can. What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to ask, uh, what do you have your own like patch patchwork together technique or do you use a specific one acting technique yeah in class oh well I, i've been trained i guess i could say classically classically trained in a lot of different techniques so is isaiah and we kind of pick and choose and we patchwork it together what you like and what you don't yeah and a lot of it man it's not any techniques or anything it's just simple Sim simple, simple basics. Yeah. Like I said, are you listening? What's your objective? Who are you as this character? Yeah. What's the given circumstances? What are you doing to get what you want? What happens if you don't get what you want? What are your core beliefs? Um, those questions, if you don't ask yourself in a scene, it's not going to make sense. And then you yeah. get to the more advanced things. Why is this scene being given for this audition? Oh, yeah. this will show the character's charisma. Why is the second scene being shown? Oh, this is where it shows how he has trouble dealing with hard things in his life. Yeah. Oh, that's why they chose this scene. So I've got to show that one in scene two and this thing in scene one. Great. Who's doing this? Oh, I know that style. Oh, I've seen that show. Great. Repeat that one more time. I'm just going to write it down. <laughs> you don't need it, man. You're always working. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue the conversation. And then uh, maybe, no, we're going we're gonna to do the Make We Sam Laugh Challenge. Oh, yay. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Let's do it. I want, I want Karen, uh, Karen. <laughs> oh, shit. I'll come back. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not coming back. I'm sorry. Man, what a way to start. What a way to start. I love you, man. <laughs> oh, thanks. I love these so much. Are we just going to whisper the rest of this podcast? Have you ever had a crazy fan? Um, I would say crazy fan. My fans have always been like fairly normal. Dude, that's amazing. You have like 5 million followers. That's amazing that one was like... Argh. I think I've had like... I've had mail be sent to my house, which is creepy because I'm like, why Why would you look up my my, uh, oh. my address? Wow. Yeah. It's, That's not cool. It's not cool. But it's always been like normal-ish mail where it's like, hey, I'm a big fan. I'd love an autograph or something. So I'm never like, oh, you're not being like, I'm obsessed with you. I've been hunting you down. Um, gotcha. I can't wait to meet you one day. And it's so cool. The square footage of your house is X, you know? <laughs> oh, I love the way you sleep. You're such yeah. a side sleeper. <laughs> exactly. I've been, I, I'm one of those people that like, I, I describe it this way. I, I've never been someone with like crazy fans because I'm the guy that's like, oh, I remember him. He was the funny guy on that, that, that show. Um, and then you're like, I, I'll follow him. See what he's up to. You know, no one's like, oh my God, what is Karin Barrar up to? I, I need to know, <laughs> which I'm grateful for. I, don't, that is a lifestyle that, I mean, your whole life changes once you get like like Tom Cruise, that Brad Pitt. I'm talking about the top, top yeah, people. Leonardo DiCaprio can't go anywhere. No, no. I mean, that, that lifestyle is just insane. I mean, what do you even, that was, oh, that was a creepy video. The Michael Jackson video where he, they closed down a supermarket and had his friends be shoppers in there. Yeah. So he would feel what it's like to be. Normal. Normal. Yeah. Oh, man. That's for, for certain celebrities that have grown up in the spotlight since they were children. That's an interesting, like, experiment because I'm just like, what? Your psyche must be all over the place. Well, I. Mm, I'm not saying you're like that. I'm not but, saying you're negative or anything like that. But no, like, no, no. But, like, I just. I guess I'm thinking more of, like, a Drew Barrymore, you know, like that level of success. Can I be completely frank with you? Yeah. I, this is going to be controversial. I think you're just as successful as Drew Barrymore, dude. I don't think so because she was the staple of so many iconic films in her childhood. 
Uh, that's debatable now because I bet you the projects you've been on, the TV shows you've been on, have had more followers than her most iconic roles. I know that's a hard compliment I, yeah, to take. I, and it's, it's not even a co- – I mean, it is a compliment, but it's more of a fact in my opinion. Interesting. Because times change. Pe- there's more people on earth. You know, there's a whole new set of generation people. Yeah. I bet a lot of your followers don't know her movies as well. Yeah, but I guess that's just like how the space evolves. Like, yeah. you know, that'll eventually happen to me. You know, yeah. that'll happen to us. People will be like, who are those guys? Me? Yeah. Oh, no, dude. That's not how it works for me. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you just want, oh, you want to be an icon for the rest of your life. I don't want to be. I am an icon for the rest of my life. Like, it's not even like a cyclical thing where it's like, oh, he peaks here and he's like, it's, yeah. more, it's more, it's just like, oh my God, he just keeps getting better and better. Is there an end in sight? And it's like, no, there isn't. Yeah. And I'm always going to be there. So you're like the Billie Eilish of network television. More. Wow. Because everybody's cyclical like you, right? You, pe- you peaked four years ago. So now. You're like, four and a half. I'm gonna see if I can keep going with this bit. <laughs> Hold on. So you, I don't think I can keep going with this bit. So you Go peaked like f- four and a half years ago, <laughs> yeah. right? So now you're like almost down there. Yeah. Now you're gonna have to In start thinking, oh, do I want to direct? You know that that thing that actors do. Oh yeah, that's yeah. My like, oh, I can't get a book a job. I think I'll direct. Hey, ma- manager, can come on, get me a directing thing, please. Hey, let me direct some more Disney shows. And they're like, yeah, we used to be a star on the show. That oh, kind of thing. You know what's sad is I've sent those emails. <laughs> <laughs> I not that not because I was like I'm not working, but I was like I want to direct more episodes of television. <laughs> oh shit, that could be a clip. <laughs> that could be a clip for me. That's just funny because I know that's an actor thing to do. Yeah. You want to know the funny part is you've done that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all do it. We're just like I really want to direct, and the showrunner's like, Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, uh, in all honesty, I realize what directing for TV is and I was like oh no I'm not, I don't want to do that so that's like a hard no I gave <laughs> to my manager and my my reps I was just like I don't, I don't want to direct I'd rather uh, be the um, uh, writer of a show or the mm. uh, creator nice so that's what I want to do I don't want to direct I want to write and create I can do directing like that's that's something I can I like that yeah I, I like I like being able to like jump into a space do that for a minute then leave yeah. like if I if I was a showrunner I think I could like do and like the job, but it would be, I would just feel incredible. Oh, trapped not showrunner. I don't want to be a showrunner. Oh, okay. Okay. Just the creator. No, no yeah. Yeah. Uh, creatively produce. Yeah. And, uh, write. That's it. it. I, I wish I could write. Do you write? Uh, yeah. I uh, just kind of keep it on the DL. Me and my buddy. Oh, it's not on the DL. I, I have to keep the details on the low. As he we, says on his podcast. Right. Me and Isaiah wrote a pilot together, and it's being sent out right now. Amazing. Read. That's great. Any any buzz at all? Or are you like, is that right now you're in that period of I like... Can't, I can't say. Oh, you, you can't say it because we're on a podcast. Yeah. Yep. Well, if you uh, need a 5'4 brown guy, I'll let your boy know. Peyton? What's up, man? Should I let Peyton know? Please? Peyton's a 5'4 brown guy? No, no. You? Me. You're not brown. You're so I, white. You know what? It's, I'm a coconut. I'm white on the inside and brown on the outside. Hey, you know what? I hate that I laughed that hard at that. Why? You're because it's true? Yeah, you're yeah. a coconut. And I'm going to call you coconut from yeah. now on. <laughs> coconut! Yeah. So disrespectful, but I, that's okay. It's fine. Oh, my gosh. Hey, I, I keep forgetting. I'm, I'm trying to say this. While we were talking about working out, I want you, would, or would you like to come to my early morning in the park sessions where I'm just doing a very light workout? It's not intimidating. Absolutely not. What? It's very, no, 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 no. Absolutely it's, not. You will feel good. It's not nothing crazy. Does Peyton go? All the time. See? <laughs> <laughs> I'm being serious. It's a, it's a really f- – you will leave feeling good. We Sam, that's great. I'm, like, oh really God. happy for you. It's not intense at all, I promise. It's – I I need to, like, build up my own 
tolerance to working out. And right now that tolerance is really low. It's dynamic stretching, if you want the honest truth. Dynamic stretching is pretty good, right? I do like yoga. That, then you'll love this early morning dynamic stretch sesh. It's not even a workout. You don't even sweat in it. You will not sweat in this workout. I don't mind. This is a side note. I miss hot yoga. That's the most LA thing I've ever said. But Did like, you do it with me? Yeah, we've been to hot yoga. That's right. Together. Yeah. That felt like years ago. I know. It was a minute ago. Oh, but that was a good time. I love hot yoga. It's so much too bad. I love hot yoga myself, but I'm afraid that everything's going to like be shut down forever when we're out of this. It won't. It won't. You know I hope this. it doesn't. It won't. What are but, you talking about forever? But I worry about, you know, like small businesses not being able to survive. Oh, that one. Yeah. People are going to close down. Yeah. Some people are, unfortunately. Yeah. And I'm worried about the, the hot yoga places in particular. It's LA. They're not going to. Yeah. I see your concern and I understand if it was like a hot yoga place in Stillwater, Oklahoma, mm. then yeah, that place is closed down forever. But yeah. in LA, no, you can't stop the yoga crowd. No, we're very, very dedicated. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, we'll talk about it later. I don't. Comment below if you're watching on YouTube. Make Karan come. Tag him on Instagram. Say, go, go, go do dynamic stretching with Wiz Ham. Uh, almost, oh, threw up a little bit. Oh, oh. Ah, that's real. So this is the podcast. D- dude, this is my world. This is Wee Sam's world. What do you think? So you want to talk about your throw up next? My throw up? Yeah. Is that what we want to talk about next? Yeah. One time, uh, maybe like two and a half months ago, I was sleeping, dead asleep. I burped and I threw up in my mouth and then swallowed it and it woke me up. And I had never felt that kind of burnt. I had acid reflux. I have really bad acid reflux. Oh, I'm, on, I'm on like a 14 day medication over the counter stuff right now. I'm sorry. It's not great. It's better now. My, my esophagus isn't burning. Oh, isn't that nuts that we have acid in our stomach? What? Are we aliens? Yes. We have acid in our stomach. It's weird. It's weird. It's so weird. Yeah. And you know what stops it? Mucus. <laughs> and those, are, those are the viewers I don't want. The ones who don't care about your mucus? Yes. <laughs> dude, that is, dude, that, the, the, Caron, the ones who don't care about your mucus, we say them, dot, 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 yes, in all caps. Are you going to edit that? No, you don't have to. I, I can. No, it's fine. No, no. Oh, Leave it all in, Peyton. Leave it all in. Man, I love Peyton. I know. But that's, <laughs> that's sad. That you sad. should love yourself. Do you love yourself? That's a great question. That's valid. Actually, that's a great question. Do I love me? Because then I start getting philosophical. Who is me? Mm. Is it my actions? Mm. Do I love? Is it me as a soul? Is it me as a soul because of the source I come from that's created all things? There's lots of questions that pop up when you ask that question, Karan. I guess just... You as a soul, as your actions, all of that kind of put together. It's all right. Yeah. I'm all right. Baseline. I hope I break even, you know. I think that's what we're all hoping for. Yeah. Is breaking even with the self-love part. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I could be a better person. Is it? Oh, dude, I, I'm just going to hold this. We're going to fix this live on air. Do you, you want to know the story of this? Please, I would love to. Yeah, so if you're watching on YouTube, you'll notice that this goddamn mic, no matter what mic stand I have, even if I have that one, it'll start going to the right. Huh. Yeah, because there's a demon who doesn't want me to talk about it or something. I think this is the sweet spot right now. It hasn't moved. It hasn't moved? It Great. Hasn't moved. Then I won't touch it. You're going to touch it. I'm going to touch it. You know that. <laughs> God, man. I'm so glad you're doing well. I really am. I'm so glad life is on the up and up for you. You have great therapy sessions. I never said it was on the up and up. I just said. I'm oh, kidding. it's not? I'm kidding. No, oh, okay. it's, it's, it's going good. I, I want to be working, but. <gasps> Same. <laughs> yeah, just like everyone else in Los Angeles. Like, I want to be working. But no, it's, it's good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. That. No, I really mean that. 
because um, I'm not going to get into any kind of specifics, but you're a good person, you've been through a lot, and you're making the best out of your life, and you're trying to make it better for other people. So if that's not a good person, I don't know what it is, man. Thank you. You're very so welcome. so sweet. Yeah. That's really, really nice. It's because I'm a good person. I'm trying to get into heaven. We say I'm quiche. Ah, uh, this is a weird episode today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've I've enjoyed, I, I've enjoyed it a I lot. Know. I I have. I always to. I always enjoy our like hangouts and yeah. this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna text after this and we're gonna be like, hey, we should actually grab coffee and talk, and then realize we're in the middle of a pandemic and then push it off for another six months like we always do. <laughs> Fucking a, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. Hey, you know who I want to hang out with? And I don't know if we could do this in the beginning of the new year. I really enjoyed when you and Sophie came on. Oh, yes. You, would you like us back on? I really, really enjoyed talking to Sophie. And actually, I want to see if Sarah would like to come on as yeah, well. Yeah, the three of us? You, yeah. want, you want my two of my best friends here's to come what, on with me? Here's what I think would You'll be You'll be <laughs> outmatched. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. I think somebody will get on my side by the end of it. Maybe. It's my show. I can edit anything. Oh, my God. Can you imagine <laughs> if I edited it to where they were like? <laughs> uh, the director's cut? That's funny. Um, no, I think once, uh, the pandemic thing has died yeah. down a little bit, you know, maybe people start getting their vaccinations, then I think we could all sit down more comfortably together. Yeah. I that'd think that'd be, be great. Yeah. That would be really, really great. Now, is there anything else you want to talk about before we end it with the make we Sam laugh challenge? No, let's just jump into the challenge. I would love the challenge. Yeah. Okay. I don't feel like I have anything I, I need to, bursting out of me that I need to talk about. Yeah. Um, I don't either, but. I feel I just want to talk to you more. And I feel <laughs> I get excited with guests I'm excited for. And sometimes I feel I rush things or I get giddy or giggly. But that's okay. That's just me. And that's honest. I that's have that effect me. on people. Yeah? Yeah. They get giddy. 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 You get excited. Really. Fun fact, when I get really excited, I do this. Why are you peeing your pants? <sighs> Ruin the bit. Back to one. Sorry. Should have learned your lines. Tell me that wasn't a great bit. <laughs> Tell me that wasn't fucking brilliant. The Make We Sam Laugh Challenge. Okay. <laughs> so every now and then I do the Make We Sam Laugh Challenge. Okay. They send in videos that are funny that they think I would laugh at. Okay. And I send them an Amazon gift card. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> yeah. And I think because of the holiday season, I did tell people it'd be 25 bucks. Yeah. An e-gift card. I'm going to make it 50. So <laughs> I have to laugh. You can laugh. You can try okay. not to laugh. Okay. And I think we've got, what, 10 videos today? 10 videos. 10 videos. We'll watch them. We'll say who sent them. And uh, hopefully somebody makes me laugh. And here's the thing, though. Because I'm honest. I don't give out freebies on this show. I don't. If I, it's not funny, it's not funny. That's valid. And if it's funny, I'm going to try not to laugh. So they have to be high caliber. I'm not giving out freebies. Let's do it. All right. Uh, Peyton. Um, you doing it? Yeah, should. I'm going to do a sick jump cut here. Oh, yeah. Ready? Jump cut. Ready? All right, welcome back to the show. Today's Make We Sam Laugh Challenge is with Karan Brar. And if you're new to this segment, basically people send in funny videos they think I would laugh at. And then if I laugh at it, I'll send them an Amazon gift card. Now, I did say the Amazon gift card for this week would be $25. However, I changed my mind right now. I changed my mind, and because of the holiday season, I'm upping it to $50, okay? Oh, he's got money. Uh, and I told them on the live stream and the post that I did, if they send in three videos and two of them make me laugh, they get two. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Okay. That's a great deal, I feel like. Do you not laugh at things? No, it's not that. You laugh at my jokes. I'm being nice, and there's no money involved. <laughs> You're doing charity work. <laughs> but with this thing, I don't want to give out freebies. I want people to feel like they earned it. Also, we have pins that we send out to people who've won. Uh -huh. With me on them as a little chibi little anime character, and it said, huh. "Make we Sam laugh," and it's me laughing. That's amazing. Yeah, I chibi really village like artist created them. So, huh. yeah, shout out to her. Um, shall we? We shall. All right, man. Who's the first video by? All right, we got three videos from Hala Amr or Ala Amr. I'm gonna butcher. Hala Amir, I think. Yes, I'm gonna That's, butcher every that single sounds name. Sounds like an Arabic. Just name. a heads up. Hala, thank you for submitting. Let's see him. Oh! 
So I got a smirk. I got a smirk out of some of them, but I didn't like full blown laugh. No, I love getting. I love watching people get hurt. Hurt, and not not die, but like getting hurt on on camera. Like that is just. I don't know. It Hilarious. Make, it, to you. Oh, especially when they're trying to do something like cool and they get hurt in the process. That's that a really mad. specific. He's shaking his head. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm allowed to because you thought it was funny. Just, I don't know. That doesn't, I just sat there with a blank face the whole time watching. I'm yeah. just like, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, glad it's not to make Peyton laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next, Peyton? I told you these first three. Oh, first three. Sorry, Come it went on, to a black Lee screen, Sam. so I thought it was a long black screen. Okay. Man. Next one. <laughs> Here we go. That's a fat squirrel. Not trying to body shame. Whoa, shoot it, that is. That is a very fat squirrel. Oh. Mm, all right. Uh, I've seen if funnier you can't fat squirrels. Beat the fear. Just do it. Scare. <laughs> what? All right. First one was decent, Hella. Thank you. Um, yeah. All right. All right. And then right. this next one is yep. from Zaina. Zaina. One of the two, I hope. Zaina. I think Zaina. I know who this is. All right. Convicted felon. Huh. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm kidding. Say hi. Hey. I, I don't get the joke. This is somebody I know personally. Ah. Uh, and they were trying to set it up where it was Zayna. Like, I would think it's her from behind. Ah. Uh, but it's actually her brother. Ah. Uh, yeah. There we go. Oh. Yeah. That explains it. I was like. Yes, this video makes a lot more sense now because I was sitting there like, oh. Your humor oh. is broken. Yeah. Like, there is nothing. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm laughing because it's so bad. Mm. Like, that's why I'm trying not to laugh. Thank you, Zaina, for submitting. I give Zaina a hard time all the time. Is that the only one she submitted? Yes. All right. Who's next? This next one's from Mikey Thomas. Okay. Mikey. Oh! Mikey Thomas actually won one of the Make We Sam Laugh challenges. That's the Mikey Thomas. Oh, oh. he's trying to double down. Yes. Yeah. He heard $50 was on the line. Just and now. J just now. But, and you know, he mentally, like, he's coming in hard. He's coming in hard. Sh shut up and play the video. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey Thomas coming in hard <laughs> with Peyton. This is from Jess. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, classic Wee Sam. I always give him, I'm going to rag on you for a second. I always give you like a long window. You never pause it. You never pause it. Every single try not to laugh challenge, he never pauses it. And you know what? It's hell in editing because I got to like resync everything. It's just, it, it drives me up the wall. I love you. So emotionally unstable. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. The emotion, the power. <laughs> Do I get an Amazon gift card now? <laughs> you do. <laughs> Dude, that was so real. That was so real, and I love you for that. I've never found the perfect like black screen length. It's either too long or too short, or it just doesn't happen at all, and I've never nailed it perfectly. All right. So I'm mainly mad at myself. Okay. So after every video, I have to hit. There the is pause. a black screen. Yes. There is a black screen. I will hit pause after yes. every video. If you, if you are reacting, hit pause. If you're ready to move on to the next video, don't hit pause. And it'll just gradually move on to the next thing. You got it. I just love how yes. passionate you I know. are about this. I right know. Now. And I've, this is literally the <laughs> first time I've heard about it is on the show. <laughs> um, that was so amusing. Let's talk about Mikey Thomas's video. Yes. Mikey Thomas, great, great submission. You laughed. I, I enjoy cat content. What? Cat content? 
Oh, oh, yes. Oh, like with cats. Yeah. Sorry, I thought that was slang for something. I was trying to figure oh, that out. Oh, oh. I don't know what that was for. Uh, he almost got me laughing on that one, so that was good. So this is this. Uh, thank you, Mikey. This is from. This is Jess. from Jess. Okay. So I'm gonna rewind it to the black screen. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. But I mean, it's all thrown off. All right. You've ruined me. One video from Jess, right? Yes. Okay. People think I'm obsessed with this, but I'm okay with it. I am obsessed with it. And yeah. yeah, good submission. Who, who else? I don't it? really get that TikTok trend. I yeah. really got it. Yeah. You on TikTok? Yeah. Yeah. I not that I post TikToks, but I like view TikToks. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I like yeah. TikToks. Yeah. Wait, any more from Justin? No. Okay. And then yeah. these next two are from Paul. Paul. Okay. I want to watch them back to back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you did that. <laughs> That wasn't it. No, no. Yeah. No. Next one. Thank you, Paul, for submitting, though. And then this next one is from, or next two, is from Brad B. Brad B, next two. Yes. I'm going to play them back to back. See the joke in that one. Calm down and relax. Calm down. Shut the motor off for a few. Get the fuck goddamn out of my fucking way! Go! Get the fuck out of my way! Calm down. I am fucking out! Calm down. Get out! Calm you down. will get scooters! My eyes are watering. I was trying to hold that in. <laughs> that one was my favorite. That, that was one, the that one was I good. loved the most. That built up well. That was a nice build up. I appreciate that. It was that or the cat video for me. Yeah. That's the last one or are we, are we good? Yes, I think that was the last one. I'm debating here. You don't have a fan whose username is like language warning, right? No. Why? Okay. I didn't know if there, because there's not a lot of language in that video. And all I got was like language warning. And I was like, this could be somebody's name. Language like, warning. Yeah. Oh, no, no. He said, uh, he said a lot of curse words in that one. Okay. After she ran over his scooter. So that's just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Um, Brad B. Brad B. Great submission. Coming in clutch. Yeah. Mikey and Brad B. You guys almost got it this week. Great work. Does no one win? No one wins, my friend. Huh? Yeah, I'm telling you, I don't give these out. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. That's the thing with my challenge. My my challenges. Oh, you gotta come in ready. And the thing is, Karan, let, let me educate you. Oh, please do. When you earn something, mm -hmm. then you appreciate it. Mm. That's it. It's, it's just a fifty dollar <laughs> Amazon gift card. Just a fifty dollar Amazon gift card. From we Sam though. From me, and it's during the holidays. Have a heart, Karan. I am known to be heartless. Karan the heartless brar. Yep, that's that's wow. That's my full name, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was fun. That was a good make we Sam laugh challenge segment, and um, we, we need to do more. What? We need to do more. 
we need to do more. I want people, maybe, well, we can't do it before the year's out. Maybe we should do it next year, All in right. January, because we're going to be banking some episodes yes. until January. Um, thank you to everybody who submitted. Sorry, nobody won, but that's just the way the game is sometimes. Um, today's been a great episode. This is our last guest guest episode for the year. Next episode we're doing is uh, me and you, Peyton. And it's going to be a nice surprise episode for the last episode for 2020. Nice. I feel so special. Yeah. And the first episode of 2021 will be a guy's night episode. Ooh, guys. And that will be, that we'll have to kick that one off hard now that I realized it. Mm -hmm. That's the first episode. But I'm so glad you came as the last guest of the year. I'm so honored to be here. Yeah. I had a really good time. Yeah. I wonder, um, I wonder how much more you'll grow the next time I see you. Maybe I'll grow an inch <laughs> or two. Maybe uh, I won't be 5'4 for the rest of my life. <laughs> you're not 5'4, are you? I'm 5'4. You don't seem like it. Oh, thank you. I've gotten that like two or three times from people this year. And yeah. I'm like, that's such an oddly specific thing to say, but I appreciate that. Yeah, 5'4. What do you think I was? Honestly? Yeah. Uh, I don't even think about that. Like, I didn't even think of, like, like, I don't think of people's heights when I see them anymore. Is that a weird thing? Like, that's not even the thing that I describe them as or anything like that. Or like, oh, yeah, they're, they're short or they're fat or they're this or that. No. That's how I describe you. You Short and fat? <laughs> I did get prison thick during this quarantine. Prison thick. <laughs> I appreciate the same. Yeah. Yeah. I got, there, I, I got the, the you know, I, I'm trying to think of a phrase for it, like quarantine 20 or something like that. Yeah. Like what's. Oh, hammy, ha hammy news. Hamstring news. It's, it's, it's all better. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank God. Oh. Yeah. You have hamstring updates on this show? Yeah. That's, That's what, great. Yeah. Wow. I, I pulled a hamstring. It popped when I was sprinting. It popped. Wow. How painful was that? Not as painful as you think, but then it was more of. Oh, I can't walk on this. Oh, shit. I'm limping for the first couple of days. Wow. Yeah, Did you really have to get, like, surgery or anything? No, I was really worried. Luckily, it wasn't the tendon. It was just the actual muscle that oh, ripped. Okay. And you just let it... Heal. That's it? Yeah. Wow. I was kind of worried the first day. That's so funny to me that, like... <laughs> with... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Doctors with certain things are just like... Yeah, I don't know. Fuck it, fam. Just let it grow back. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there ain't nothing I can do. <laughs> like, it's crazy how uh, doctors are like that. Yeah, there's certain things that they're just like, Meh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'll get a little personal then. You know what I was telling you? I have anxiety problems last yeah. year. Uh, Peyton was updated. They had done a bunch of tests on me. Mm -hmm. I was having some problems, which still they don't know. I, I still don't know what the issue was. Fun. It was problems with down there, mm. with my balls, mm. with my urethra. Mm. Um, I was uh, first. I was like, "Is this an STI? Is this 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 this? What's yeah. going on?" They did a bunch of tests multiple times. Came back negative for all the tests. Um, towards the end of last year, it felt like somebody just kicked me in the nuts constantly, like that Ooh. dull pain. And I'm yeah. I'm sitting there and I'm just like. Okay, something's not right. I'm not supposed to feel like somebody hit me in the balls constantly. Yeah. And it was driving me crazy. And um, yeah, the doctor, the doctors <laughs> I went to were like, yeah, we don't know what it is. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, guy, you should know what it is. Did it just mysteriously go away? Yeah. So what I did, I started Googling some possible things and I began... Um, taking heavy doses of turmeric, believe it or not. Huh. And I was like, something must be inflamed yeah. to be causing this. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a fucking doctor. But I was doing two pills three times a day of liquid turmeric hmm. for like a month, month and a half. And I started seeing results. I was like, oh, this is getting better. This is getting better. Um, yeah. Still don't know what it was to this day. Wow. Isn't that weird? Do you still take turmeric? Yeah. Not as heavily at all, but yeah. like I, it, it helps tremendously with my knees and my uh, joints and any inflammation in the body. Huh. Look at that. You should definitely look into nootropics, stuff with the brain, especially if you're 
dealing with the short term memories, uh, sometimes you yeah. have problems with that. That's helped out tremendously. Like this Jocko drink, maca, L theanine, green tea is supposed to help because it oversets the uh, jitters with the L theanine in it. Huh. I've, those words just went straight over my head, but I'll look into it regardless. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. I love me. you, man. I hope you stay safe and stay strong. Uh, your Netflix film, Hubie Halloween, is still on Netflix, right? It is. It's still available. Check it out. Watch it. It's yep. not Halloween anymore, but it can be if you want it to be. So watch it, kids. Yeah. Have a good time watching you, it. You worked with Adam Sandler on it, so that must have been great. Yeah. He's the coolest dude ever. He's, Everybody says that. He's he's like the best. on a Sand Being on a Sandler set is the best kind of set to be on. Yeah? Yeah. It's it's like... Why? It is so relaxed, but yet everyone is like, t like to the point, you know, like Adam, Adam is, is so great where he's just like, Hey, this is what I need. This, this is what we're doing. And da, 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 like gets to the point they're like, they treat you like adults and they also have a good time doing it. It's like, wow, you can make a project efficiently without having to be mm. dicks about it. Yeah. Is he specific on what he wants? Yeah. He'll let you know. He'll be like, Hey, Karn, I need this from you. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, and that makes my job so much easier because it's like, it's not so much of like, well, maybe could we do a little bit of this or that or. Is there any way you can get a little bit more? Spe I'm just curious. Like, yeah, what, um, because I like to know as from an actor's perspective, like what specifically, like I could look out for, for a certain scene or something like that. I can go back and watch. And I'm yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if I could point to a specific scene, but like, for example, if I'm like doing a reaction shot, you're like, oh, I need that bigger or like uh, tone it down a little bit or, you know, like okay. laugh a little bit harder and then do this or, you know, like he's, oh, he's okay. he very much like just lets let, he. Yeah. He just lets you know he, if he's like, oh, you know what? Do this line delivery this way. And you're like, OK, cool. cool. And it makes everyone's lives so much easier. And he's the nicest dude. And he treats his people really, really well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's really good vibes. That's so good to hear. Everybody always talks very highly of Adam Sandler. Yeah. Saw him at the Thirst Gala. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's the tweet. I know you worked with him, but I saw him at a gala. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I, I sat like a table across from him. We see him. Yeah, but did you see him? Yes. Yeah, I oh, did. Okay. All right. <laughs> What can I say? This Car Brar, star of stage and screen. Car on the Heartless. Um, I think you should change your name. Car on the Heartless? Yeah. Hi, I'm Car on the Heartless, and I'm reading for it. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. One sec. What? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, um, seriously, it was a blast having you on. People can find you all over the interwebs. And, um, yeah, I wish you nothing but the best. Thanks, man. Much love. Shall we uh, wrap this up? Peyton? Yep. It's up to you. Let's play out the music. Let's do it. All right. Thank you, IW Radio. Thank you, uh, Nice Guy Digital. Why am I hesitating? Thank you, Peyton. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Thank you, Khan. Thank you to all our new subscribers. Thank you to everybody who submitted today for the We Sam Make, Make We Sam Laugh Challenge. Um, next time, step it up, okay? Step it up. Almost got me this time. Good job. Um, happy holidays to everybody. Seriously, be careful this holiday season. Be smart. Uh, know what's worth risking and what's not worth risking. So, with that being said, love you all. We got one more episode before 2020 is over. And then we go on a little bit of a couple weeks break for the holidays. And then...